This is the first in what I hope to be a series on uh, vintage oscilloscopes. And the one that I'm going to pay most attention to in this uh, segment is the Syncor SC3100. This is a picture out of the catalog from the mid-90s. This was kind of the top of the line uh, oscilloscope for uh, uh, service centers and things of that sort. It was optimized for working on uh, color TVs of the day and so on. But nonetheless, it was a 100 megahertz uh, oscilloscope. It had a lot of features, including automated measurements and things like that. Uh, it's sort of the middle of what I regard as the vintage oscilloscopes. Of course, the scopes go back into the 30s and, uh, and up into the present day. Uh, among the scopes that I'm going to be looking at are scopes like this one, which is a 60 megahertz triggered sweep oscilloscope from the 70s. Uh, over here is an HP uh, digital oscilloscope. Uh, this one, by the way, is analog with delayed sweep. Uh, this is a is a digital oscilloscope, and you may have seen uh, this used a lot. Uh, B. Anderson on his uh, B. Anderson TV uh, channel uses this HP oscilloscope. It uh, was a very popular oscilloscope uh, back in the uh, uh, 90s, and uh, I think it came out in the mid to late 90s, about the same time as the SC3100. And then, of course, there are many others. You've uh, seen my other videos. You've known that I uh, use this Tektronix 2024 quite a bit. Uh, recently, I've done some comparisons between the Siglent uh, SDS-1000 and the Rigol uh, DS-1000 series. Uh, I hope someday to uh, do a little bit of uh, review and uh, usage information on this one, which is, I consider my best scope. This is a Rigol DS4000. Uh, this particular one has been upgraded. Uh, the bandwidth is uh, actually a little over 500 megahertz, but uh, that's kind of where I hope to go. I can't guarantee that I'll get around to all of this in any reasonable period of time. But uh, to start things off, I'm going to show you some work that I did some time ago on a number of SC3100s that I bought on eBay. I think I bought a total of three of them. One of them sort of worked, the other two didn't. I refurbished uh, all three of them. Uh, and as you'll see, one of the problems was that the, the oscilloscope probes the, the, uh, are a kind of special point. And so uh, they're hard to get. And so I worked on trying to uh, to modify some existing probes to work with the SC3100. So that's what the rest of this particular video is going to be about. And then as I move along, I hope to do some of the other things that I've talked about. Several months ago, I noticed on eBay that a number of these SC3100 oscilloscopes uh, showed up about uh, half a dozen in total that I saw and the prices had dropped substantially. Now this uh, scope when Syncor sold it new cost several thousand dollars. And it has a few features that are kind of neat but it also has a couple of uh, issues I guess you would call it in terms of the accessories. I think one of the reasons that they are showing up on eBay is a number of uh, shops and uh, labs and schools uh, are closing and so there's a little bit of a glut on the market. But nonetheless, they're pretty good oscilloscopes, 100 megahertz. And uh, the problem though is they have a little bit of an unusual probe arrangement. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is an original Syncor probe. And if you look carefully at the, uh, the BNC connector, you'll see two things. One is there's a there's a extra connection coming out the side here. And the second thing is you notice there's a little metal tip sticking out there. Now what those are for 
the the extra wire fits into a, a socket that allows you to read the DC voltage of the point you're probing at the same time that you look at the waveform and uh, measure its frequency or uh, uh, any of these things. So in other words, you can choose either DC volts or the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the uh, signal or its frequency or the AC voltage, which essentially is the RMS value if it's a sine wave, or the uh, AC value in dB. Uh, the problem is that these probes, the, the Syncor probes, are scarce as hen's teeth, and Syncor wants a, a, a nice price for them, and I'm sure that uh, that they probably are worth that price to, to a lot of people, but given how cheap the, uh, the probes are on uh, online, standard probes, the question that I had was, can I adapt a standard probe to do all the things the Syncor can do? And I'm pleased to report that the answer is yes. So let me show you kind of what I did. One of the first things I did was I ordered some uh, 100 megahertz probes. And you may notice right there that uh, you get two probes for $8.99. Now the reason it says buy another rather than buy now is because I've already bought uh, actually four of these probes. Uh, two of them you'll see right over here are connected to this uh, to this oscilloscope. So uh, and so the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to show you a few things in the schematic and so on. Uh, but let me get set up to do that so I can show you how I sort of figured out how to make these probes work, just like the Syncor probes. The first thing that I did is I ordered a uh, a copy of the manual from a place called servicemanuals.net. It came on a CD. Uh, it includes both the uh, operation manual, uh, that's this one, as well as the service manual. Now, in the service manual, I looked at the schematic of the inputs here, and one of the first things I noticed is a little bit hard to read there, but what that says is 10x sense A. And what that connection uh, represents is if you look on the outside of that B and C, you will see around the very edge of uh, a little ring that's insulated. That ring is to sense the Syncor probe. You remember I told you that the probe has this little this little pin sticking out. Well that pin connects that ring to the the uh, shield or the ground of the uh, of the BMC connector and when it does that the uh, Syncor senses that you have a Syncor probe attached and readjusts everything to compensate for that. So the first thing that I had to uh, figure out was how can I get this Syncor unit to uh, to sense a, uh, a a regular probe like it was a Syncor probe, and of course the the trick would be to find something to short those two together. Well, I suppose you might be able to solder something on there or do some other things that I kind of thought were were maybe a little too kludgy. So I was trying to look for a mechanical solution. And one thing I tried is taking a washer. Uh, 
something like this and uh, drilling it out or cutting it and so on and fitting it behind there. This was my attempt. It sort of worked. The truth is though it was a little too thick and also it's a little too stiff. The problem is that the uh, probe doesn't really go on very well and if you make this thin enough for the probe to go on easily because it when it goes on it, it pushes down and then locks and pops back out a little bit well this was pretty loose and basically what I found is that the readouts became pretty intermittent so the next thing I tried were some copper washers and I cut one like this made a lock washer out of it and tried the same thing this works pretty well but it still has the problem that it uh, doesn't really maintain good contact and it does put a fair amount of pressure on the probe so the third thing I tried were some springs and what I did is I got a, a spring from an assortment that I uh, that I bought from uh, Harbor Freight uh, a few months ago. They have a lot of these assortments. By the way, that's also where I got those copper washers. And in here are some compression springs. Now they're a little bit too small to go easily over the BNC connector. But basically what I did is I took one of these springs and I cut it about in half and I put one over this connector and one over this connector you have to spread them out a little bit with some pliers but at any rate here is uh, what now happens I have this uh, scope set up and if you notice right here if I do if I press volts peak to peak, of course it gets zero because there's nothing on this uh, on this probe right now, nothing connected to this input. So now I'm going to put the input in, and you'll probably see as I as I make contact, it reads 9.69 or 9.7 volts peak to peak. Uh, now. Uh, if you don't have that little spring behind there, what happens is the Sencor switches into a different mode. And basically, these uh, the volts per division uh, readouts here don't work. Okay, now let's deal with the uh, next issue, which is how you can get the DC voltage to read correctly. Now, if you notice here, if I switch this to DC volts, it reads zero because, of course, there's nothing plugged into that uh, input. If you look at the uh, application manual for the SC3100, you'll see that the DC voltage in basically has a one and a half meg ohm resistor to ground, and so it has about a one and a half meg input impedance. And the probe has a 13 and a half meg resistor in it. And then it connects to the uh, same point as the, uh, as the tip of the, uh, uh, the waveform probe or the by 10 probe. Now notice the by 10 probe has a 9 meg resistance and a 1 meg input impedance. And that's fairly normal. Uh, so then the question is, well, how do you get a signal from there, that is, from the, uh, the tip of this, into the DC volts input? And, of course, you need to insert a 13.5 meg resistor. Well, the, uh, the first thing I did is I did perform some experiments. I used one of these uh, BNC T connectors so I could connect both the probe and uh, a uh, RCA jack to the voltage. And then I made up a little test plug that uh, has a 
13 and a half mag resistor under that blue shrink wrap there. Uh, take my word that it's a 13 and a half mag. So what I did is I plugged that into the uh, that adapter, the BNC to RCA adapter, and I did this just because this is what I had around. So uh, this was intended to be for test purposes, not not the final version. Anyway, I figured out how much resistance I needed and whether it would work. And it turns out that if then you take the uh, the little uh, connector off of the uh, Syncor probe and connect it between here and that DC volts jack, then you get an accurate reading of the DC voltage if the probe is in the by one position. I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, now, the, the last thing that I had to figure out is how in the world do you get those little connectors? The, uh, they look like this. Well, it turns out these are two millimeter banana plugs. The ordinary banana plug is four millimeters. So these are called mini banana plugs and Pomona makes them. I think the number on them is a 3690. In fact, I think I have a bag of them over here that I bought from yeah, 3690-0. That's the black mini banana. The 3690-2 I think is the red ones, but I wanted black ones because that's what Syncor used. And also I was going to use black wire. So I got me some uh, mini banana plugs. And the question was, how am I going to uh, get it into the, uh, the probe? How am I going to get that signal? So what I did is I took one of these uh, cheap $4 probes and I cut it open. And what I got, you can see here. This is with the probe cut open. Now this little uh, copper shield goes right over the top of this. So I've left it open so you can see what I did. I connected a wire. It's a little bit hard to see, but right down there. This black wire is connected to the center terminal of the BNC. In other words, I connected this wire to the same signal that goes in to the uh, to the Syncor. And then I put a 13 and a half mag resistor in series with the, the mini banana plug. That's what's inside this uh, this shrink wrap. And then you plug it in here, and what you get now is you get the ability to read the DC voltage. Now the DC voltage for this particular situation is 0.524. So let me get out a, uh, because it's reading the, the average value of a square wave. Uh, so let me get a like a 9 volt battery and show you what, uh, how much a 9 volt battery reads. I got out a fairly fresh 9 volt battery here and I've uh, got the unit set up to read DC volts on channel B right there. By the way, you can read the DC voltage or for that matter the frequency of that signal without displaying it. So right now I have the scope set up so that it's only displaying channel A. You can see the uh, LED there on just channel A, but so I'm just going to be using the scope to measure the voltage of this uh, of this 9 volt battery. So let's hook it on there and go up and see how much it reads. Well it reads 9.26 DC volts, which is very very close to what I read on uh, other meters. So now, 
what I've effectively done, and now I'm going to clean this up and shorten that lead and put some shrink wrap over it and put that that shield back in there and all of that, but uh, I assume you can sort of figure that out on your own as well or do it however you'd like to. But basically what I've done is I've taken uh, a couple of probes that cost me total of $9 uh, for both of them, and I'm going to now do the same thing to this probe, and I'll wind up having two probes that will do everything the Sencor will do. Now, there's a second advantage to doing this. With the Sencor, the 10X probe is always in the circuit. You can't reduce the voltage anymore because it's already a 10X, and if you want to use a 1X, you have to change probes. With this, all you have to do is, is flip a switch. And it goes to a, a by 10 reading. The interesting thing is that everything else scales as well. In other words, I'm going to flip the uh, this to the by 10 position and remeasure the DC voltage. At any rate, I thought some of you might be interested in this, especially if you're thinking about buying one of these uh, scopes. They're pretty cheap. Uh, the uh, I bought this one, and I also bought that one up there from the same source, NRI Industrial. Very good group to work with, and a little bit of a shout out here to Nicholas at NRI Industrial who uh, worked with me on this because on one of these I did have some problems with the display. Turns out it was very simple to fix. It was just a ribbon cable inside. Uh, but I talked with Nicholas uh, online and email and uh, he gave me permission to go in and, and check the unit before the return period expired. And I did. I was able to fix it. So uh, once again good folks to deal with. NRI Industrial sold me these two scopes. Uh, and a very, very reasonable price. So, uh, anyway, I am very happy. The Syncor uh, is a good piece of equipment. The only downside is you almost can't get those probes anymore unless you're willing to pay 160 or so dollars to Syncor, which, if I were an industrial lab, I would have no problem paying that, but I'm just a retired hobbyist, and... Uh, so $160, uh, truthfully, is about what I paid for this scope. So I wasn't about to double the price of the scope just to get uh, another equivalent of a Syncor Pro. At any rate, that's the, the way I see things, and uh, maybe it's my Scottish blood. But uh, a $4 probe with a couple of resistors and a, a dollar connector, and I wound up with... Uh, with the equivalent of a $160 probe. Hope you enjoyed this. That's all.